Hey, what's up guys? Dr. D here with another video. Um, today I'm going to be talking about how to use Ableton Live as a tool for practicing your instrument. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so um, depends on what you're trying to practice here, but I usually kind of verge on two different types of practice. Sometimes I'm just working on technique, like learning an instrument, working on scales and playing along with the metronome and just doing technical work. And then sometimes I need to practice like songs and learning songs. Like I've got some gig coming up or I'm writing music or playing in a new band and I have to learn how to play the parts of that song and uh, learn the song's form and everything. So two different contexts. Let's talk about just practicing like technique and scales. Okay, so I've got my mandolin today. I've been working on mando a little bit, trying to brush up on my scales, my chords and everything. So um, one of the things I'll do um, when I'm working on scales and chords is I'll set up loops that are in different keys. Like I'm trying to learn the pentatonic patterns on the, on the mandolin. So what I'm going to do here is I've got Ableton Live open. Um, I don't really need MIDI tracks, at least not for what I'm doing right now, but I'm going to have some audio tracks that I'm going to use to record little clips of loops. I've got my, uh, my track armed here. I'm going to put on headphones so I can play along with the metronome. But essentially what, uh, what I want to do here is uh, get my tempo set. So one of the things I can do is tap or just tap on the tempo marker. Boom, choo -choo 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 -choo. Got my metronome on. And uh, what I'm going to do here is record a loop of me playing just a straight C chord. Let's do that first. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to stop real quick. Okay, so usually what happens when you're working in session view and you're recording in these clips is it'll round the loop to the quickest um, completion of that measure. So I think I got a measure here. Two, three, four. Okay, cool. Sweet. So that's C major. All right. So what I might do is rename that little uh, clip there C major, and then go to another one. I'm gonna do. Um, let's go around the circle of circle fifths and fourths. Uh, let's do F major. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, so there's a loop on F. So I'm going to rename that F major. Maybe do Okay, then I just kind of go around and practice with my chord progressions or different keys. And um, I'll save this session. I'll come back and revisit it day in and day out and I'll just kind of log in like all my chord progressions, all my keys, I'll have like a routine and sort of like a um, kind of a structure of things to practice on that instrument. So another uh, context that we're going to explore is how to practice along with recordings and learn songs. If you joined a band and they have a bunch of demo voice recordings you know off of their phones from band practice that you've made and you want to like learn parts and work on coming up with ideas and stuff that's what we're going to do next. I usually set up a different um, practice session in Ableton Live. Um, right now I've got a uh, practice session that I've already loaded, but I've got two guitar tracks, both of which have a amp modeling um, program software on them. I'm using Guitar Rig by Native Instruments, and I've got two tracks that have um, guitar rig with various uh, amp modeling sounds so I can play my electric guitar uh, through the, the speakers of my DAW. Another thing um, I want to point out about that is for things to ha have low latency I uh, in my audio preferences I have the buffer size at a pretty low sample rate so there's low amount of latency it's pretty pretty much spot on there I have created one MIDI track with a drum rack on it. It's got a drum kit playing on it, and I've created two drum loops here, and I'm working in session view for now. <clears throat> I've got kind of a classic country train beat and then another more simple beat. And I essentially use these as metronomes. So what I'll end up doing is I'll just turn on the drum loop. I can change the tempo wherever I want it to be, fast, slow, whatever I need to work on. And I'll kind of warm up, play scales, or just shred around stuff. And just, whatever, practice 
playing my scales and warming up or improvising over a, um, a drum beat rather than a metronome. When I'm working on songs though, what I usually do is I go into the arrangement view and what I'll do is I'll grab tracks from like rehearsals or songs off the album or demo recordings, whatever I have. And I grab these songs and I throw these into the, uh, the session. There we go. So I'll grab a track and I'll throw it on my songs track here and zoom in a little bit so I can see the whole song. And I want to make sure that the balance between my guitar sound coming through the speakers and the sound of the track is pretty even. Okay, cool. So I got a pretty easy, uh, pretty decent level balance between my track and my uh, guitar. I've got both of those active, and I'll start and go ahead and practice along with uh, with this track. <laughs> Okay, so I'll practice playing along with the song or coming up with ideas. Another thing I'll do is I'll load in like song after song after song. If I have a, a set list for a, a show coming up, I will grab song one off the set list, song two off the set list, song three off the set list, and I'll just start lining up all the songs on the set list and I'll get them all scooched pretty close together and I'll probably trim off some of the dead air if there's any like chatter, band chatter. Another thing I can do um, is as I'm um, playing along with that, I can also record what I've been um, practicing to. So if I hit record there, I can just record on what I'm doing. Okay, so as I come up with ideas, I can document them as I'm playing um, each rendition of this song and kind of you know build upon that over days and weeks of uh, practicing. So that's some ideas for how to use Ableton Live as a practicing tool for both technical exercises and learning songs and writing songs and coming up with material. Hopefully you uh, gleam some information from that and uh, keep being creative, keep making music, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.